requires a beaker of cold water and a beaker of hot water. When you add sugar cubes to them, the one in the hot water will dissolve faster than the one in the cold water. To explain the different rates of reactions, Max Trotz and William Lewis came up with collision theory in the early 1900s. The first assumption of collision theory is that the particles must collide with one another in order to react. Most particles will act like billiard balls in a game of pool, and when they collide, they bounce off each other. The collision itself isn't all that's needed for a reaction to occur. The particles also need to have enough energy, enough speed, to break and form new bonds when they collide. The minimum energy required for a reaction to occur is called the activation energy. Some reactions require very little, and some need a lot more to get started. Generally speaking, most reactions will occur faster when the temperature is increased, because temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles. With more kinetic energy, they will be more likely to have enough activation energy for the reaction to occur. But for some reactions, there is still one more factor, orientation. Even if the particles collide with sufficient speed, if they aren't at the correct angle, a reaction won't happen. In this example of nitrogen monoxide and ozone, the reaction didn't occur because the oxygen of each molecule touched during the collision. In this collision of the same two molecules, the nitrogen touches an oxygen and the reaction occurs, making oxygen and nitrogen dioxide. The orientation was correct, so the reaction could occur. So in summary, the three key ideas of collision theory are that particles must collide to react, they must have sufficient energy to break and make new bonds, and they must collide with the correct orientation. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.